podcast incroyable incroyable ah merci <laughs> it's been a long time since high school french okay you guys oui So hello. So today we are going to get back into the Heartstopper comics and continue in our quest to move through is it chapter chapter 4 section 4 4 which uh, has quite a few quite a few sections to it and that is why we are splitting it up into many videos. <laughs> so, uh, in our last installment we had Nick Nelson by Icon coming out to well not exactly coming out to his brother David so much as David finding pictures of him and Charlie and being like, hey, hey, you're gay, you think you're gay now? And the last thing we ended on was Nick and Charlie texting each other after the whole David situation and Charlie almost texting Nick with I love you but deleting it at the last minute. And that's where we stopped. So today we're going to go back to... Uh, the comics. <laughs> Today we're going to go back to the comics and see what happens next. And that's what we're going to do. So let's do it. All right. So we hop ahead to Charlie sitting in class, tap, tap, tapping on his phone. And then Nick. Oh, that's right. Because Nick, is it, is it that Nick, Nick and the, uh, the year 11s are already done with school for the year? But the younger the younger folks have to keep going. So Charlie's stuck in school, and Nick is not. <laughs> so okay, yeah. So Charlie's at school, uh, talking to Nick. Oh yeah, we have the empty chair next to him, so maybe he's sitting in form, texting Nick. And then Nick is out walking Nelly, tap tap tapping back. And then Charlie's texting him on the train. And then Nick is texting him while playing video games, smiling. So even though they are apart, they are still communicating a lot <laughs> okay and then one week later we have Tao saying thank god it's nearly the summer holidays and Alit says and nearly the Paris trip so off goes Tao saying I've got drama now so I'll see you at lunch and Charlie watches him go follows Alit into the classroom they sit there Alit just quietly <laughs> quietly uh smiling and Charlie just bursts out god I need to tell him about Nick of course yeah in in the comics first Tao does not yet know about Nick and Charlie. So Charlie, Tao's one of my best friends. And Alid says, well, oh, there's a very aggressive sounding dog outside. Okay. Uh, and Alid says, well, do you want to tell him? Yeah, definitely. And if we remember last time, Alid actually advised against telling Tao uh, and revealed the fact that Tao might have been the reason why Charlie got outed because Tao was talking about it to Aled, and Aled suspected someone might have overheard. So then Aled says, look, I know I said it wasn't a good idea, but I don't know, maybe I was sort of projecting. And Charlie says, what do you mean? And Aled says, I, well, I have this friend. I've known him since we were really small, and it's becoming something more than friendship. But we don't want or need to tell anyone about it. For now, anyway. Because right now, it's just our thing. And Charlie's just shocked. He says, Alid, you could have told me. And Alid says, I know, but this is my point. This whole deal with you and Nick being out to people, I think you need to stop worrying about anyone else's feelings. I know Tao's one of your best friends, but if you don't think now is a good time to tell him, you don't have to. It was different for you because you were outed and you didn't have any control. But this time, you do. There's this idea that if you're not straight, you have to tell all your family and friends immediately, like you owe it to them. But you don't. You don't have to do anything until you're ready. This isn't about Tao right now. This is about you and Nick. There's a long pause from Charlie. How are you so smart? And Alad says, ha ha. <laughs> and Alad asks, what do you want to do? Charlie, I just, I don't want what happened to me to happen to Nick. And Alad looks at him. Dot, dot, dot. And Charlie says, anyway, tell me about this boy. And Alan's like, what? No, come on. Not even his name. Um, it's Daniel. <laughs> yeah. And as it says in, uh, it says at the bottom of the page here, 
on uh, on tapas. But learn more about Aled and Daniel in my YA novel Radio Silence, available to buy on Amazon Book Depository and in many bookstores. Yes, yeah, so um, if you have not read Radio Silence, which I have on my bookshelf right there, right behind Buddha. Uh, yeah, so Radio Silence is actually my, probably my favorite of Alice Oseman's novels. Uh, it's, 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 Alid is definitely one of the main characters. He's not the main, the main character. Uh, the main character is a girl named Frances who ends up befriending Alid. Um, it's a very good book and it does go more into detail about Alid and his friend Daniel and how that is becoming more than friendship. And uh, it, it's definitely, similarly to Alice's other novels, it definitely has a lot of uh, heavier themes and darker stuff going on. But it's, I love Alid. Like, Alid, Alid is one of my favorite characters. So I recommend it if you want to know more about Alid and Daniel. Or just Alid. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And yeah, what, what Alid says here is a very good point. Like, if you're not straight, you have to tell the people that you care about like you have to tell the important people in your life um and i've even heard of uh some people feeling like betrayed or you know getting angry if someone who is not straight didn't tell them right away uh or waited a little bit but i think it's very important to remember that yeah you don't owe anyone you're coming out. You don't owe anyone your sexuality or your identity or anything, especially if you're still figuring it out. So, yeah. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> okay, oh, it's time, it's time. So we see we see folks heading to the buses for the Paris trip. And we have Mr. Ajayi and uh, a sleepy, <laughs> a very tired-looking Mr. Farouk, which, uh, mood. Mr. Farouk is just a mood all the time. <laughs> Uh, so we have Dar Tara and Darcy. Darcy says, morning, sirs. And Mr. Ajayi says, morning, girls. Excited for Paris? Yeah. And we have Charlie saying goodbye to his parents and Julio saying, message us, okay? And send us a postcard. Okay, okay. And his mom says, love you, baby. So we have a nice a nice hug that going on there. And Charlie walking away with his rolling suitcase, looking happy, smiling, ready for Paris. And then there's Nick waving hello. And Mr. Farouk in the background still just looking grumpy <laughs> charlie gets on the bus nick gets on the bus uh they end up sitting in front of tau and aled it's all looking cozy but nick glances back concerned at harry and harry notices him looking and looks away i mean i guess this is the first time that they've kind of been forced into the same environment since the fight <laughs> So Harry, Harry looks surprised and looked away, and Charlie says, I didn't know Harry was coming on this trip. And Nick says, yeah, it'll be fine. He's been ignoring us since what happened at the cinema. And Charlie says, probably scared you're going to punch him again. Nick says, I don't normally punch people, you know. And Charlie says, I know. God, I wish I'd seen it, though. Charlie. Yeah, so once again, very different from in the show, where, of course, in the show, uh, Charlie is horrified to learn that Nick has gotten into a fight for him or over him or about him uh whereas in the comics charlie is just like yeah dang good job i wish i'd seen it we have mr ajayi saying okay everyone can i have some quiet so i can take the register chatter 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 and mr farouk emerges from his his tiredness co cocoon to say quiet mr ajayi is like okay thank you mr farouk now if you could answer when i call out your name please yeah, and I'll be very interested to know um, how they characterize Mr. Farouk in the show. Because, like, I love Mr. Farouk's, like, <laughs> grumpy, sarcastic uh, personality. And I hope that they the, I hope that they stick with that. I hope they keep that personality for him in the show. But whatever they do, I'm sure I'll enjoy it. But I, I especially like, and especially, like, bringing that up against Mr. Ajayi's kind of, like, Mr. Ajayi is sarcastic too, but in kind of a more, like, he's he's kind of dry and sarcastic, but in a more upbeat sort of way, whereas Mr. Farouk is like the grumpy boy who always needs more caffeine or alcohol, as he says. But yeah, the bus descends into silence as they call the roll, and then we get 
some oh okay and we have uh we have tara reading radio silence right there and that's the same that's the same cover that i have while uh darcy naps and looks like l is talking to sahar i think okay we have mr ajayi i love mr ajayi's shirt <laughs> So Mr. Ajayi talking to Mr. Farouk. Mr. Farouk still looking exhausted. Nick and Charlie and Tao and Aled looking out the looking out the window at the Channel Tunnel, the Channel. And then we have Mr. Ajayi. How long until we're in France? Probably about ten minutes now. Mr. Farouk, is this tunnel underwater? Yes. So why can't I see any fish? Dot dot dot. <laughs> oh, and we have Nick napping on Charlie's shoulder and listening to listening to music together. Ah, cozy bus ride together. Lovely. And then we're entering into Paris, and Charlie says, Hey, wake up, we're here. And Nick's like, huh? Oh, here they are in beautiful Paris. I apologize for my accent. It is not good. So here we are at L'Hotel. So Mr. Farouk handing Tao the keys, saying, Tao's room. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're in 414. I'll be in 403 if you need me, but hopefully you won't. And meet back here at 7 for dinner. Hopefully he won't. <laughs> okay, and Darcy asking, Mr. Ajayi, where are you sleeping? And Mr. Ajayi says, I'll be sharing with Yusuf. Uh, I mean, Mr. Farouk. <laughs> yeah, you will. And off they go up the elevator. They find their room. Nick says, it's here. And oh, look, two double beds. How interesting. And Charlie says, oh, we have to share beds? Yeah. And they look at each other and blush. And all it's like, well, I want the window bed. And Tao says, well, I want the other bed then. I hate getting woken up by the sun. And Nick and Charlie in the background like, (laughs) well, that's okay. And Charlie says, um, I guess I'll go with Tao and you go with Oled. And Nick says, yeah. All right. So Nick heads off to the bathroom and, uh, Charlie sits down on the bed he's going to share with Tao and Tao pats him on the shoulder and says, I thought sharing with Nick would make you feel awkward. Just standing next to girls I like makes me feel like I'm being electrocuted. And Charlie says, well, actually, the thing about me and Nick is, um, knock, knock, knock. (sighs) They get interrupted. They get interrupted. So Charlie was was literally about to tell him. But yeah, I wonder how they're going to handle this. And I know we've talked about this before, but I really wonder how they're going to handle the main conflict of the Paris trip. Because in the comics here... The main conflict is that Tao does not know about Nick and Charlie, and Charlie is trying to tell him, but also not telling him, and then it all kind of blows up as a result. So I'll be interested to see what they do, and uh, I wonder if if Tao, I wonder what the rooming situation will be, if it will still be like, I mean, if it follows this, it would be Tao and Isaac and Nick and Charlie, if maybe like Tao you know, tries to split them up for a different reason, which would suck because, like, he seems to be... He seemed to be feeling kind of okay, like, accepting the fact that Nick and Charlie were together by the end of season one. But I really can't see them letting Nick and Charlie share a bed. Like, I feel like there's going to be something that prevents them from doing that, so I just wonder what it's going to be. Will it be Tao? Will it be something else? Will they end up, like, sharing a room with someone else, not... Tao and Isaac, and I don't know. We'll see. Because <laughs> if they weren't sharing, the thing is, if they're sharing with two people who know about them, there's no reason for them not to share a bed. So either they're going to come up with some other reason for them not to share a bed, or someone who doesn't know will end up sharing with them. Like maybe James. I don't know. I'm just speculating here. Probably too much for something so small. But anyway, we have knock, knock, knock on the door. And Tara says, Aled, is this your room? I still have your phone charger. And Aled's like, oh, just coming. And Darcy says, whoa, your room is so small. And Tara says, thanks for letting me use it. No prob. <laughs> okay, and Tao crouching behind Charlie. Is Elle out there? Tell me if Elle is out there. Darcy says, come see our room. It's massive. But is Elle in there? She sure is. And off they go. And Charlie flops back onto the bed. Nick comes out. What did I miss? sits on the bed and Charlie's like I wanted to share with you and Nick says same we'll get to do it one day (laughs) and they both blush I mean not do it share a bed I mean (laughs) Nick says that came out all wrong and Charlie leans his head against Nick's shoulder ha 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 and a nice little heart from Nick and Charlie says I can't wait to do it with you one day (laughs) and Nick Nick's like yeah 
And then Charlie grabs the, the, the drawstrings on Nick's sweatshirt and smooch kisses him. But, oh, the door clicks open and it's Darcy and Aled. And here comes one of my favorite scenes where Darcy says, Nick and Charlie, are you two coming or... And they both look, well, Charlie looks very annoyed. Nick's look, Nick looks just kind of blushy and startled. And Darcy says, oh, you're being gay. Good job. Carry on. <laughs> and Charlie says, will we ever kiss without someone walking in? Nick says, we do kiss in risky places kind of a lot. Maybe so. Yeah, in the, in the, previous, in the previous section, they were caught kissing in the equipment room by Ms. Singh. Though I feel like that's a little bit different from like, kissing in your own hotel room with the door closed but it's darcy she doesn't knock <laughs> okay so we have a crowd of folks going to the hotel restaurant and someone saying i hope this hotel has good food mr farouk is pizza french no <laughs> yeah <laughs> poor mr farouk so we have nick and charlie and l well the whole gang and uh Everyone munching, munching, but Charlie not really eating. Tao looking annoyed for some reason, because he's Tao. Um, and Nick noticing that Charlie has not eaten much of anything, looking concerned. And then they're back in their room. Alid's asleep. Tao is asleep. So, oh, Nick and Charlie hold hands. Yeah, like, Nick and Charlie cannot share a bed in this, because we need to have this moment. We need to have this moment of them falling asleep, holding hands across the way, and then waking up the next morning with like Nick's arm just dangling there and Charlie all snuggled up. But that has to happen. So Paris, day two, knock, knock, knock. And Charlie's like, huh? <laughs> Are you guys awake yet? And Tao says, I'll get it, pulling on, a sh pulling on a sweatshirt. And it's nearly time for, he opens the door, breakfast. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. And like, Tao must have really been half asleep because, like, how did he not recognize Elle's voice and realize? I think he just didn't think it through. I think he was half asleep and was like, oh, someone's knocking on the door. I better go open it. And didn't think about the fact that he's, like, half naked in boxers and, like, a, a shirt that doesn't cover his chest yet. And Elle is very blushy. <laughs> and Tao gets completely red and slams the door in her face and is like, it's L. <laughs> we have dot, dot, dots from Nick and Charlie and Aled, sleepy, tousled hair Aled. Hang on. Okay, let me find my place again. We still recording? We're still recording. Okay. And L is like, ah, oh, we'll meet you down there then. <laughs> and Tao says, okay. Oh, and Tao sits down on the bed. And Charlie says, Tao. He says, help me. And Charlie says, look, Tao, Elle likes you back. And Tao looks really annoyed. What? No, she doesn't. She does. I promise you she does. That's stupid. You're just trying to make me feel better. I'm going in the shower. <laughs> and a big shrug. Oh, alid has gone back to sleep. And a big shrug from Nick. Yeah, so it's interesting that um, in this, Tao has put Elle on such a pedestal that he can't even believe that she would for a second like him back and it's interesting that in the show we see it from the reverse perspective where we get to see l crushing on tau but tau not knowing about it and l thinking that there's no way tau would like her now not because not because she thinks that he's like so much better than her or something but just because of the fact that she doesn't think he sees her as anything more than a friend it will be interesting to see how they handle this when we get to the point where tau i'll be i'll be interested to see how it goes when Tao, because we've, words. So in episode eight, Tao finally kind of realized that he might be thinking of Elle in a more romantic sort of way. So it'll be interesting to see how that develops and uh, how he handles that. So yes, okay. <laughs> okay, so we have the whole gang in front of the bus and Mr. Ajayi says, okay gang, this afternoon you're going to be exploring Montmartre. I cannot say that word, I'm sorry. Montmartre, I, I took French but I do not remember how to pronounce things correctly. We. Oui. So uh, this afternoon, you're going to be exploring by yourselves for a few hours, for a couple of hours. There are lots of shops and places to visit, like the Sacre Coeur Church and the Musée de Montmartre. Montmartre? I don't know. That's museum for all the students on this trip who don't even take French, says Mr. Farouk. 
And Mr. Ajayi says, meet back here at 5 p.m., please. You have our phone numbers if you get lost. Have fun. And stay in your groups. Yeah, now, quick quick anecdote. So when I was in school, uh, when I was like 12 years old, I went on a field trip to New York with the Spanish club. I was in I was in French. Like, I took French. But for some reason, they opened it up. I'm not even sure why the Spanish club went to New York because they did nothing. Like, we did nothing Spanish-related. It was just like, hey, let's go somewhere, okay? So, like, the French club was also invited. And by Spanish club, French club is just people who are in French class and Spanish class. So uh, my friend and I went as well. So... <laughs> People did not really have cell phones back then. They were not super common, and kid, people our age definitely did not have them. So, like, they essentially just set us loose in New York. Like, my friend and I, we were two 12-year-olds just set loose in New York um, with no way to contact the, you know, the, the teachers if we got lost. But they just parked the bus and were like, okay, go explore, be back in an hour, <laughs> and off we went. Now, unfortunately, uh, the friend I was with dragged me into a clothing store and spent 50, 45 to 50 of our allotted hour trying on clothes while I stood outside the dressing room feeling bored. And it never occurred to her that this might be a less than great way to spend our time or that I might have wanted to do something different. But anyway, <laughs> the point is, it's, it's good that, uh, that people these days have cell phones that we can, we can keep in contact when we're on field trips. Mr. Farouk says, stay in groups. And off they go. And I think most of us have seen the, uh, the photos that people snapped of the cast in Paris. And it does look like we have this kind of formation of them walking through the streets where you have Nick and Charlie in the front, Tara and Darcy, Ellen Sahar, Tal and Aled. So, uh, yeah, I hope I hope we get, like, this iconic moment, but it does seem like we will. Okay, and then Mr. Farouk says, I need a drink, an alcoholic drink. And Mr. Ajayi is like, we probably shouldn't drink alcohol. And Mr. Farouk says, I need a croissant then. <laughs> Can't get alcohol? Get some bread. So Nick says, so what's the plan? And Tao and L at the same time say, the Musée du Montmartre. That for some reason, my mouth just does not want to say this word. The museum? <laughs> and Aled, Aled looks away smiling as they look at each other in, in surprise that they have said the same thing at the same time. Darcy says, well, I'm not really into museums. And Tara says, yeah, I kind of just wanted to wander around. And Charlie says, we need to go see the Sacre Coeur at least. And Nick says, and get some food. I would 100% be in Nick's camp in this case. Like, I want to go get some delicious food. And Elle says, but but Renoir painted there. And Tal says, it's a really important place in art history. Yeah. And Tara says, why don't you two go together? Charlie says, yeah, we can meet you in like an hour. And Elle tucks a piece of hair behind her ear. And Tal says, just us two? And they look at each other and blush. And Elle's like, well, we do both want to go. And Tal says, yeah, we should do it. And off they go together. And then, oh, we get introduced to Sahar. Yay. So uh, Darcy says, this is Sahar, by the way. Hi. She's sharing our room. And Charlie says, hey. Yay, Sahar. So here's Tao and Elle at the museum. And <laughs> Darcy, Darcy has purchased a very large and uh, tacky sweatshirt. It's not tacky, but it's definitely a touristy. Very large and touristy sweatshirt that says, I heart Paris. Tara looks on in uh, horror and or disgust, I don't know. Nick and Charlie are looking at postcards. Olive's hanging out in the back, just having a nice day together. Tao and Elle looking at art, standing very close to each other. Nick and Charlie holding hands. Tao looking over at Elle. We have Nick and Charlie's hands brushing, and then Tao and Elle brushing. So kind of a, uh, we're getting some, some parallels between the two couples here, although they're not a couple yet. And Darcy says, man, I am so hungry. Anyone want to get ice cream? And Nick's like, yeah, I want one. And Alid says, me. That's not Alid's voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then here we have uh, this update may trigger some people to see a description of the triggering material. Please scroll down to the update notes. And if we scroll down to the update notes, we see the trigger warning. The content warning is this update contains discussions of and suggestions of an eating disorder. So this is when we start getting into the the 
details about Charlie's eating disorder. So Nick looks at Charlie and Tara, who are chatting, and Nick says, Char, do you want an ice cream? And Charlie says, oh, um, nah, I'm still kind of full from lunch. Nick says, but you barely ate any lunch, though. And Charlie's like, what? Yeah, I did. I mean, I'm fine, Nick, honestly. And Nick's like, okay. This reaction of almost panic that someone has noticed that he's not eating um, and Nick's kind of bewilderment and concern about that I think is very, very realistic. So then uh, Darcy's like, we'll meet you back here. And Tara says, okay. And off they go. And Charlie watches them go. And then Nick says, hey, Aled, have you noticed that Charlie doesn't really eat much? And Aled's like, what do you mean? Meanwhile, Sahar and Darcy are consulting Darcy's phone, trying to figure out where where the ice cream place is. And Nick says, I don't know. I just, he never finishes any meals and he never eats snacks. And Aled says, oh, hmm, I don't know. I don't think I've noticed. Nick says, oh. Aled says, why? Are you worried about it? And Nick says, I don't know. Maybe a bit, maybe a little bit. I know he's naturally on the skinny side, but I don't know. Alid says, you should ask him about it if you're worried. And Nick says, yeah, maybe. Yeah, so one of my favorite things about the Paris trip is that we have the whole gang together. So we get the opportunity for characters who don't usually interact to interact. Like, I love seeing this moment of, like, Nick and Alid talking. And earlier, we ha- or earlier and next, we have Charlie and Tara talking. So, like, getting the chance to just see... You know, everybody kind of interacting with each other in different combinations is really cool. I always love seeing that. Um, and I'm wondering if this conversation, if it's in the show, which I can't imagine why it wouldn't be, if it will be with Isaac instead. And that would be very interesting. So, yes. <laughs> so then uh, they find... Oh, here we go. They find... <laughs> prepare yourselves. Uh, they find the place and they walk in. And uh, Nick is leading the way, and the ice cream guy says, Oui, monsieur. Actually, I don't know. It might be ice cream lady. The ice cream person says, Oui, monsieur. And Nick says, Combien pour deux bols de glace? And the shop person says, Cinq euros. I'm so sorry for my French. Nick says, Ah, alors, je, peux, je pourrais avoir deux bols de glace, s'il vous plaît? Okay, so he's saying, uh, Yes, sir. Uh, how much are two bowl du glass, I guess ice creams. I don't know what bowl is a bowl. <laughs> Probably cone, so maybe how much how much are two ice creams? And he says five euros. He's like, ah two and then can I have two ice creams please? Quel parfum? So what kind? Uh au chocolat et à la vanille. And I'm sure you can figure out that means chocolate and vanilla. D'accord, vous êtes anglais? Oui, c'est pas vrai. Votre accent est incroyable incroyable ah merci (laughs) it's been a long time since high school french okay you guys but yeah he's like uh he says okay are you english yes oh that's that can't be true your accent is so incredible your accent is incredible he's like oh thank you meanwhile darcy i love darcy just like creeping closer oh my god since when could you speak french like an actual french person and Nick says, oh, uh, my dad is French. Since when? Since his birth? <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure we are all looking forward to this scene <laughs> in the show and uh, seeing how Kit does uh, saying something that is not we. Oui. <laughs> anyway, so we go back to Charlie, who's snapping a picture on his phone. And uh, Tara says, so how are things with you and Nick? And Charlie looks over, surprised. And he says, oh, really good. Ha ha. Sometimes I still can't believe he's actually my boyfriend. Dar says, really? Why? I don't know. There was a time when I was super jealous of you because I thought you and Nick might, you know. And Tara's just like, Tara just throws back her head and, and laughs. There's no way that would have ever happened. Aside from the fact that I'm absolutely not into guys, Nick's so in love with you, it's a little unbearable to watch sometimes. And Charlie gets super blushy and is like, you think so? You don't? Haha. <laughs> and then uh, Charlie asks, how did you and Darcy get over the fear of people knowing you're together? And Tara says, it took time. And Charlie's question mark. And Tara thinking about it. Darcy was already out. We'd been dating for a while and most of our friends knew, but other people were starting to guess too. At our school, lesbian was used as an insult all the time. 
I probably even used it once or twice when I was younger. We were terrified. It took me a long time to even feel comfortable calling myself a lesbian. And for a while, we thought it'd be easier to pretend we were just friends. I guess for a while it was easier. But in time, we got more comfortable being us. We reached the point where we knew that whatever people said or thought about us, we knew who we were. And we loved ourselves anyway. And Charlie asks, so how did you tell people? And Tara says, we didn't really. We just stopped hiding anything and sh changed our relationship status. Ha ha. <laughs> Tara Jones is in a relationship with Darcy Olson. Are you worried about you and Nick being out to people? Yeah, I don't want him to get bullied like I did. And Tara says, well, that's always a risk. And yeah, sometimes staying closeted is safer. And Charlie looks stressed. And Tara says, this is stressing you out a lot, isn't it? Dot, dot, dot. I don't want him to feel like he needs to be out just because I'm out. And Tara says, but do you want to be out as a couple? Yeah. And does he? Well, he said he does. So maybe you should just let it happen. It doesn't have to be a big dramatic announcement. You can just be you. And if it goes badly, well, you can deal with it together. And Darcy returns, so absolute disaster, Jonesy. They didn't have any mint chocolate left, so I got a strawberry. <laughs> and Tara kisses, kisses Darcy, and Darcy's like, huh? And Charlie's smiling. And then Nick returns and says, hey, and sits down next to Charlie, who looks at him with a blush. And Nick blushes and says, do you want a lick of my ice cream? <laughs> He's like, oh my god, that sounded really sexual for some reason. And Charlie cracks up. And Charlie takes a lick of the ice cream and gets some on his nose and says, not bad. And Nick's like, haha, you got some on your nose. What? And then they hold hands. Ah, uh, yeah. And personally, I have to say, if we do not get this scene of Charlie with ice cream on his nose and Nick adorably wiping it off, we riot. We're all going to riot if we do not get this scene. Okay? Okay. Yeah. We're all agreed. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here are Tao and L returning, and Charlie's like, there they are. And uh, Darcy says, oh my god, do you think anything happened? And Charlie says, I hope so, or Tao is going to pine to death. Okay, and that's where we'll stop. <laughs> okay, so yeah, lots of, lots of great things in this section. So we finally made our way to Paris. As I said before, I love the different interactions we get between different characters in this section. I love just the whole fun of going on a road trip together, even though it's a bus. So going on a bus trip together and, you know, the hotel rooms and stuff. And I really wonder how this is going to be adapted uh, for the show and what new things are going to be brought in and what they're going to keep the same. And there's just, there's just a lot. And uh, of course, wondering how it's going to be handled with Tao knowing about them this time. So I guess Charlie's source of stress might be more just worrying about being out as a couple to everyone instead of worrying about that and worrying about Tao. So we'll see what happens. But regardless, it should be it should be interesting. So <laughs> okay, so how about you? What what do you like about this section of the comics? What are you looking forward to seeing or what are you hoping that we get to see? And yeah, tell me, tell me in the comments. I, I like comments. <laughs> okay, so uh, thanks as always to our patrons who are absolutely amazing and wonderful. And uh, a special shout out to our Nick Nelson members, Kelly Walker, Book Nerd Charlie, Paul Z, and Michelle. Okay, and I will talk to you guys next time. I hope you have a wonderful day or night or afternoon or morning or dusk or whatever time it may happen to be. And I will see you next time. Okay, bye. We. Say you're coming around